In the last section, we did a little bit of reconciliation. So if you skipped over all the source code files, hopefully you now have a complex directory and inside there is the client, server, and worker folders. And each of those folders represent the React server, the Express API, and the worker process as well. We're now gonna start the process of adding Docker containers to each of these applications so we could, that we can start each of them up inside of a development environment. So we're gonna take the React project, the Express API, and the worker as well, and we're going to make dev Docker files for each one. Now, the key thing here that I wanna make sure is really clear, at this point, we are focusing on development versions of Docker containers for each one. So I want to make sure that we have a smooth development process. We're not just gonna skip all the way to the end here of deploying everything out to production. That would make life a little bit too easy. So we're gonna first make kind of development versions of containers for each of these applications and make sure that there is a very smooth workflow. So in other words, I wanna make sure that if I make some change to some code inside of say the client project or the server project, I wanna make sure that I don't have to rebuild my entire image to get those changes into effect because that's a really slow development workflow. We don't wanna to have to rebuild an image every time that we make one little change to the source code of a project. So in practice, what does that mean? Well, it means that we need to look at the project files inside of each of those directories. And inside of each of them, we're gonna set up a pretty similar Docker file workflow. Remember that each one of these projects is probably gonna have a package.json file that records all of the dependencies of our project. So we're going to copy over that package.json file as step number one. We're then gonna run an npm install, and then we'll copy over everything else. The last thing to keep in mind is that we're gonna set up a Docker compose file and that Docker Compose is gonna set up volumes for each of these projects so that we kind of share all of the source code inside of each project. And that's what's gonna make sure that we don't have to rebuild our image entirely from scratch every time that we make one tiny little change. Okay, so with all that in mind, let's get started right now. I'm gonna find my terminal and I'm gonna start up my code editor based on that complex directory. Now, again, quick reminder here, I've set up the code command line tool so that I can use it directly from my command line. If you don't have that set up, basically at this point, you just wanna open up your code editor based on that complex directory. So you should see client, server, and worker. Now, I think a good place to get started would be on a Docker file or a development Docker file for our client directory. Because this project right here, we've already set up a Docker file kind of in the last section when we went through the deployment of the first application we put together. So inside of my client directory, I'll get started by making a new file called dockerfile.dev. Again, we're making use of this added extension right here to indicate that this is a Docker file only for use during development of our application. Then inside of here, we're gonna add essentially same exact stuff that we had before. We're gonna specify a base image of node Alpine. I'm gonna set up a working directory of app. I'm gonna copy the package.json file over. I'll run npm install. I'll copy over everything else. And then finally, I'll run a command of npm run start, like so. So this is the same Docker file that we put together just a moment ago, and we're probably gonna end up using a very similar one in our other two projects as well, with maybe just one or two, one or two small little tweaks. Now to test this out, I'm gonna flip back over to my terminal. I'm gonna run the docker build command inside of the client directory, and I'm gonna make sure that I specify the dockerfile.dev file as the Docker file of choice. So back at my terminal, I'll change into the client directory and I'll execute docker build. I'm gonna specify the docker file to use for this by adding on the dash F flag. I'll say docker, docker file.dev and then I'll put a period on to specify the build context. And remember, I'm specifying the build context right here of period. That means use the current directory. In order for everything to work the way we expect, I have to be inside the client directory. So this is where that whole idea of build context is start going. Is, excuse me, is going to start getting really important, and we'll talk in great detail about this build context stuff in just a moment as well. Okay, so I'm going to run that. We'll very quickly see pulling the Node Alpine image. It's then going to do the npm install. 
during the npm install process, you might see a warning or three. Warnings are totally fine. So don't worry if you see a warning. No issue with that whatsoever. If you don't see any warnings, that's also, also totally okay. No problem with that as well. Now the npm install is going to take just a moment. After that runs, it's going to execute the copy instruction and pull over all the rest of the project files and then start up everything inside there by setting the default command of npm run start, which is how you start up an application that has been created with create react app. Now this might take a moment or two. Okay, well, it's just about done. So let's just hold on for just a second here. It's all done with the npm install. So it's now going to do the copy step in just a second to pull over all the other source code files we have inside of our project, like say the SRC folder in the public directory. And then once that's all done, it'll set the default command and that's pretty much it. There's our container right there. So let's now try starting this up by running Docker run with the container ID. So I'll do Docker run and I'll paste that ID in. We'll then see the React script start up. We should see starting the development server, and then eventually the application should start up. Something like this right here. Now, if you see any message that says something about like an unused variable or anything like that, anything that seems to indicate an error, that means that you very likely made a typo when we were putting the application together. And so you will want to go back to the last section where we downloaded that checkpoint zip file and overwrite your files with everything from that zip file, just to make sure that you're using the exact same code that I am. All right, so that's one Docker file done. Let's take care of the other two for the server and worker projects in the next section. So I'll see you in just a minute.